This is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, Hodgkin's disease. Hodgkin's disease is characterized by painless lymphadenopathy and there are uh, many symptoms. And before I talk about those things, I want to talk briefly about this uh, little bit history. This disease, for namesake, it was named after Thomas Hodgkins, one of the most prominent pathologists of all time. Thomas Hodgkins, he was an English physician, and his life is very interesting. He was educated in Scotland, in King's College, London, and he got his uh, MD degree from University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Then his interests are multi-sided. I mean, he was working with uh, René Lenac. You know, René Lenac uh, who invented stethoscope. Many years, Hodgkins was working with Lenac in France and Italy. And then after getting his PhD, uh, MD from University of Edinburgh, he visited Palestine. In fact, uh, he went with Moses Montefiore. You know, there is Montefiore Medical Center in Bronx in New York City. The Montefiore Medical Center is named after Moses Montefiore. So, Hodgkins, he went with Moses Montefiore to Palestine and in the city of Jaffa he got dysentery and he died. So interesting story. Born in Scotland, educated and then spent so much time in England and finally died in Palestine. A remarkable life. But anyway, that's not uh, something you need to remember. Just for some trivia from history. So let us talk about uh, Hodgkin's disease. The clinical findings, I mean there is a bimodal distribution for Hodgkin's disease. There is one peak in 20s and one peak in 50s. So 20s one peak and 50s the another peak. And many times patients present with a painless mass in the neck and sometimes they come with other symptoms like uh, unexplained favors, losing weight, and also disturbing night sweats. And many times generalized pruritus. They take a shower and get itching all over their body. And that disturbs their life. They go to the doctor. The other important and interesting thing is Many of them get pain in their lymph nodes after drinking alcohol. So they go to bar and they drink. And they get pain in the lymph nodes. And they go to doctor and the disease gets diagnosed. For much of the time, the disease is limited to lymph nodes. But once the vascular invasion happens, the disease goes into other places by hematogenous dissemination. Now there are many types, nodular sclerosis type, mixed cellular type, lymphocyte depleted type. These are classic Hodgkin's. Then there is a lymphocyte predominant type in a non-classic. So these things, especially the Hodgkin's disease, it should be, you need to distinguish this. I mean there are other reactive lymph node diseases. For example, you take uh, infectious mononucleosis or cat scratch disease. They cause re reactive lymphocytosis. That's not real lymphoma. And also HIV patients. Now, Hodgkin's disease is not included in the C uh, CDC definition of uh, AIDS, but in HIV patients, the incidence of Hodgkin's disease increases almost like five times. So you see, this cause is very have high incidence, and also in HIV we see lymphocyte depletion type and mixed cellularity type. 
those are the most common types of Hodgkin's disease in HIV patients. So remember those things. The incidence of uh, Hodgkin's disease increases and also mixed cellularity and lymphocyte depletion are the most common types. Now treatment. Treatment depends on staging. And that's common sense for any disease. If uh, it's initial stages, better treatment. If it is terminal stages, not many options. The same thing applies here in Hodgkin's disease. But you do the staging using a CT scan or a PET scan or in an advanced stages you use bone marrow biopsy. And there is a classification, iron arbor classification. It goes like this, stage 1 when one lymph node region is involved, that's stage 1. In stage 2, it is involvement of two or more lymph nodes on one side of the diaphragm. So you see stage 1, one lymph node, stage 2, two or more on one side of diaphragm, and stage 3, and lymph nodes involved on both sides of diaphragm and stage 4 disseminated disease with extra nodal involvement. So the an arbor staging not difficult to remember actually. Stage 1 one lymph node, stage 2 two or more on one side of diaphragm, stage 3 two or more on both sides of diaphragm and stage 4 its advanced disease with extra nodal involvement. That staging is important because we use that staging in the treatment plan. And if the, the, if the patient has in stage one, it is mostly you use either radiotherapy or chemotherapy. And as the disease advances, I will talk about it in a minute. As the disease advances, the chemotherapy options are also, they vary. So remember the staging first. And the treatment depends on the staging. Now there is radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Radiotherapy only used in the initial stage, like uh, stage 1A patients with uh, high cervical lymph nodes. And uh, when the cervical nodes are involved and the patient has low erythrocyte sedimentation rate, in that stage, you use only radiotherapy. In stage 1 and 2 disease, you use a combination like uh, chemotherapy, a short course chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So in stage one and two, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. And chemotherapy, ABVD regimen is used. Doxorubicin, bleomycin, venblastin, and docarbacin. Those are the four drugs we have in ABVD. And there is Stanford 5, where we have doxorubicin, when blasting and uh, bleomycin, vincristin, nitrogen mustard, and uh, prednisone. And also, this is added to the radiotherapy. So, those are the two things you need to remember. Okay? ABVD. In ABVD, we have uh, doxorubicin, bleomycin, when blasting, docarbacin. And in uh, Stanford, V or 5, doxorubicin, when blasting, bleomycin, then vincristin, nitrogen mustard, and prednisone. So you add this chemotherapy with uh, radiotherapy. Now next stages. Stages, patients with stages like uh, stage 3 and stage 4 disease, they need to receive a full course of ABVD. 
and uh, you say for stage 1 and 2 you are using only short course but stage 3 and 4 you need to use full course and also if stage 2 has, if the patient has a large mediastinal mass they need a full course of ABVD or Stanford 5 you see the more advanced the disease the more serious the disease then you use full course chemotherapy and radiotherapy now a few words about prognosis all patients should be treated with uh, uh, with the intention of curing them because prognosis depends on the stage you see treatment depends on the stage prognosis depends on the stage and there are seven things stage age of the patient the gender of the patient the hemoglobin level the albumin level the white blood cell count, lymphocyte count. These are the seven things that determine the prognosis in heart Hodgkin's disease. So remember those things, folks. Stage, age, I mean the older, the worst prognosis. There is gender, there is hemoglobin level, albumin level, there is white blood count, and a lymphocyte count. I mean, the less the lymphocyte count, the worse the prognosis. And the cure rate, uh, the cure rate is like 75 percent when the risk factors are minimal, and uh, the cure rate falls down as risk factors go higher. So you see, the point is uh, when you see the prognosis. I mean, don't pluck your hair to remember this. It's not a big deal. Stage 1, small disease, excellent prognosis. Stage 4, disseminated disease, poor prognosis. Don't worry about numbers. That's basically what you... I mean, there are so many cancers. If you want to remember uh, all those numbers, you will lose your brain. You don't have to. You need to get the glimpse of the major things here. So the poor prognosis stage, higher the stage, lower the prognosis. Uh, prognosis. Also the lymphocytes, lymphocyte depletion or mixed cellularity. And if you see those things, the prognosis is poor. So you see folks, I mean, uh, these things determine. And also non hodgkin style like a lymphocyte predominant type, you can use radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and you can achieve excellent results in these patients. And high stage patients, when it is high stage, you need to go to use full course chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And uh, also when there is, even in the initial stages, like stage two with mediastinal involvement, you need to use uh, full course chemotherapy along with radiotherapy. So uh, don't worry about uh, all these particularities. What you need to remember is there are two different chemotherapy regimens ABVD, Stanford 5. Okay. So, and also radiotherapy. You need to add this. I mean, if it is advanced disease, you can use stem cell transplantation. Using stem cell transplantation, you are reproducing those cells and uh, curing that cancer. So, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, stem cell transplantation. Now, all patients with Hodgkin's disease, you need to refer them to an oncologist or radiologist. That's not something uh, we can do as primary care physicians. You need to send these patients to an oncologist or uh, a hematologist. And also there is the role for radiation oncologist when the patients need a, a radiation therapy. So patients with uh, Hodgkin's disease, they are very, very, I mean, uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, 
they are like a, you can miss the diagnosis they can come to you with the advanced malignancy and when you see them you need to admit them and you treat them and with the help of uh, a specialist okay so those are the important points about Hodgkin's disease so if you got something please uh, feel free to post any of the important points you have and also visit me at uh, www.drpaul.org that is www.drpaul.org thank you very much and uh, uh, take time to subscribe to our videos also thank you very much god bless you